In this video, we're going to be discussing the fifth of the superficial reflexes, and that is the gag reflex. The gag reflex is similar to the corneal reflex in the sense that it involves cranial nerves for both its sensory and motor components. If we look over here on the left, the sensory component specifically is cranial nerve 9, that is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Unique to the gag reflex is that it actually involves multiple motor components depending on which outcome we're looking at. And those are going to be cranial nerves 10, 5, and 12. And those are the vagus nerve, trigeminal nerve, and hypoglossal nerve, respectively. And we're going to be looking in more detail at the gag reflex arc in just a minute. Now to assess for presence of the gag reflex, the patient's going to be positioned and seated with their mouth wide open, as you see right here. And the PT is going to touch a tongue depressor, making sure it is sterile first, to the back of the throat to provide tactile stimulation to the soft palate. So if you look at this X right here, this is approximately the spot that you're going to touch with the tongue depressor. So it's basically right below the uvula and actually posterior to it in the back of the throat. But also note that this reflex may be evoked by touching the roof of the mouth, the back of the tongue, the area around the tonsils, or the uvula. There's some wide variation here in how you can actually elicit the gag reflex, and there's also a lot of variation in the strength of the gag reflex. Some people have a very strong gag reflex, some people it's very weak, and in a small percentage of the population, about 10%, it's actually absent, and that's actually okay in this case. And immediately following that tactile stimulation with the tongue depressor, the PT will monitor for the following events to determine if the reflex is present and normal. And in general, you're going to be monitoring these regions for a particular action that we're about to talk about. You're going to be looking at the uvula, the right and left sides of the soft palate, the tongue, and then not shown in this picture, the jaw. Now, as we previously mentioned, the original stimulus for the gag reflex is soft palate tactile stimulation that's provided by the tongue depressor. That tactile sensory information is transmitted to the brainstem via cranial nerve 9, which is the glossopharyngeal nerve. This is our sensory component of the reflex arc. More specifically in the brainstem, that information travels to the spinal trigeminal nucleus or the solitary tract nucleus which is also called the nucleus tractus solitarius. That information is then sent to a number of nuclei shown here on the bottom right of this picture. The first is the nucleus ambiguous. The nucleus ambiguous is going to send motor output to the pharyngeal muscles and trigger pharyngeal constriction. And that motor output is carried by cranial nerve 10. That is the vagus nerve. Now the nucleus ambiguous can also activate in turn these other nuclei down here. So the nucleus ambiguous will activate the motor trigeminal nucleus, which then sends motor output to the muscles controlling jaw opening. And that motor output is provided by cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve. Now if you remember, the muscles of mastication, in other words the muscles that control the jaw, are actually controlled by the third branch, the trigeminal nerve. So cranial nerve V3, as it's often called, or the mandibular nerve of the trigeminal nerve, okay? just to be very specific. And then the nucleus ambiguous will also trigger activation of the hypoglossal nucleus, and that sends its motor output to the muscles of the tongue, causing an anterior tongue thrust, or protrusion of the tongue. And that's via cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. So that leads us to discussing how you know that this reflex is present and normal. Well, number one, you're looking for pharyngeal constriction. This is the actual gag, and this is provided by motor output from cranial nerve 10 or the vagus nerve. The second thing we should see is symmetric palate elevation, elevation on the left and elevation on the right. And this is provided again by cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. So here's the palate over here on the right and on the left. And we should see both of these elevate during the gag reflex. Okay? Also jaw opening. We should have a little bit of mandibular depression and protrusion. And this is provided by cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve, and more specifically the mandibular nerve of the trigeminal nerve. And we should also see tongue protrusion or tongue thrust. This is provided by motor output from cranial nerve 12 or the hypoglossal nerve. So again, when we watch the tongue, it should protrude directly forward. It shouldn't deviate to one side. In fact, as we'll see in just a minute, deviations are going to indicate either a lower motor neuron lesion within the reflex arc 
or an upper motor neuron lesion. That being said, the gag reflex will be abnormal if there's an upper motor neuron lesion or a lower motor neuron lesion somewhere in the reflex pathway. And so how do you tell if the reflex is abnormal? Well, in general, you're looking at the things that we just talked about and looking for asymmetry or deviations to one side, left or right. The first thing you might see is asymmetric palate elevation. So notice here, we've got the two sides of the palate. We're only getting elevation on the right side, but there's no elevation on the left, and there's weakness on the left side. And this is because we've got a left lower motor neuron lesion. So again, left lower motor neuron lesion, we're not gonna elevate on that side. So first of all, failure to elevate on the side of the lower motor neuron lesion. That means that only the right side here will elevate and we'll actually get an overall deviation in that direction, which would be away from the side of the lower motor neuron lesion, okay? We may also see jaw deviation. So normally, the jaw opening should be symmetric, symmetric mandibular depression and symmetric mandibular protrusion. However, in an abnormal gag reflex, the jaw deviation may occur toward the side of the lower motor neuron lesion. So notice we've got that left lower motor neuron lesion and the jaw deviates toward that side, toward the left. So in a similar manner to the jaw deviation, we may also see tongue deviation. Remember, normally the tongue thrust should be a symmetric anterior protrusion of the tongue. But again, we're gonna see deviation of the tongue toward the side of the lower motor neuron lesion. We have a left lower motor neuron lesion, so the tongue deviates left. Now note that you can also have an upper motor neuron lesion that's affecting the gag reflex. And in that case, everything here is gonna be flipped. So you'd still have asymmetric palate elevation, but it would be overall deviation toward the side of the upper motor neuron lesion. You'd still have jaw deviation, but it would be deviation away from the upper motor neuron lesion. And you'd still have tongue deviation, but it'd be deviation away from the side of the upper motor neuron lesion. So my preference when learning this is to learn it first for the lower motor neuron lesions, and then know that for upper motor neuron lesions, everything is gonna be opposite. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.